Hey everyone, welcome back to Sundays at Tiffany's. And if you're new here, my name is Tiffany Beeston from Beauty and the Beastons. And every single Sunday, I put up a video to get you motivated for the week ahead. With that being said, we have Thanksgiving coming up. Whether or not you celebrate it, this video is still going to give you all of the motivation. In today's video, there's gonna be lots of cooking, lots of cleaning. I always wind up doing something extra, so I'm sure that'll be in here too. I'm trying to make the kids a shirt for they don't know that we're going yet. Um, so I'll be using my Cricut machine for that. I'm literally making a full-blown Thanksgiving dinner by myself, so let's pray that this goes well because this will be my first time making a turkey. I've made like whole chickens plenty of times, but I've never made a turkey, so stay tuned. Let's see if that could either be really good or be a disaster. Today's video is also going to be a collaboration with Brianna Kay here on YouTube and Bits of Brie on Instagram. She's one of my best friends here on YouTube and she makes amazing content. She is a mommy lifestyle vlogger, uh, lots of cooking, cleaning. She's an amazing decorator and I'm lucky enough to call her one of my best friends. We are so close with her family. My kids think that her kids are their cousins. So yeah, she is really dear to my heart. So make sure that you check out her channel and tell her that I sent you. And I will have her video linked in the description box so you'll be getting double the get it all done motivation. So to start off, we literally have a photographer downstairs right now because we are having a little photo shoot today because we're giving away a $5,000 dream nursery. So since the photographer is downstairs is setting up, I should probably go down there. But I'm going to take you with me as well because that definitely is getting all done. Taking pictures with children is beyond stressful to me. Um, so I'm happy to get this done and I'm excited to be giving away a $5,000 nursery. I'll show you all the amazing products involved in it. All you have to do to enter to win this $5,000 dream nursery is head over to my Instagram and follow the instructions on the picture of me and the kids with all of the nursery items. So let's go downstairs. All right, so we just finished the photo shoot, amen. The kids were, I'd give them like an eight out of 10, but they should probably get a 10 out of 10 due to the fact that it was so close to nap time. Chris is going to do um, all the stuff to the turkey that like you need to take out because if you I do it, right you're so weird. Yeah. If I do it, I will never eat turkey again. So Chris is going to do that and then we're gonna brine it. So stay tuned for that. Let's have a little rocky moment, hold this up. Ew, no, I'm definitely not. But before Chris completely takes everything away, apart, I wanted to show you what the prizes were. So there's this beautiful crib, as you saw in the little clips before. This, we're gonna use this for Ella's um, big girl bed, but how cute is that toddler bed? And then this chair is a glider, and it reclines. Romeo's taking full advantage of that. Got a bugaboo stroller, a dock -a tot a diaper bag. Also got these adorable wooden instruments. They are so cute. The kids were loving these. Little pillows. Little blanket. And there's a lot more stuff too. So our turkey is brined and you know what I'm gonna say. Pray that that tastes good. Um, and now I'm actually making dinner for tonight. But first I'm gonna insert how we brined it right here.
For tonight, I wanna try this chicken I keep seeing on Pinterest. It looks really, really yummy, right up my alley, so. The first thing I'm doing is just heating up some olive oil. I just have some chicken here that I seasoned very generously with salt and pepper, and I'm just gonna throw that into my pot here. You wanna use a oven safe skillet for this. This is entertaining the kids while I'll make dinner. She's getting it all done, baby. Yes, that's getting right. <laughs> Alright, so I cook the chicken for about four to five minutes on each side. And this is what is left in the pan, and this is gonna make an amazing, amazing sauce. Now I'm just going to be adding two cloves of garlic. My little thing here. Now that the garlic's cooked, I added a teaspoon of thyme, and I'm the recipe calls for a teaspoon of red pepper flake, but I want the kids to eat this too, so I'm gonna do a little less than that. Next I'm adding three fourths cups of chicken stock where the magic is gonna happen. Okay, and then I'm immediately adding a half cup of heavy cream. We're gonna stir that up and then let it simmer for five minutes. Also, I forgot to mention, I have my oven preheated to 375. All right, so this has been going for five minutes. Now I'm adding a half cup of sun-dried tomatoes. Stir that in. And you can cut them up smaller if you'd like. Um, I'm leaving them pretty big so that I can pick them out from the kids, but it'll give the sauce a really yummy taste. I love sun-dried tomatoes. And last but not least, I'm adding a half a cup of mozzarella. The recipe calls for Parmesan, but I don't have any, so. Yeah. All right, so I added my chicken back, and then I'm going to put this in the oven for about 15 minutes. All right, so I also made some rice with this and some steamed green beans. I'm just adding any extra pan sauce that I have to this. Okay, this looks amazing. Thank you for Amen. Amen. Daddy. Hey. 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 dinner right now. All right guys, we just got the kids to sleep. We cleaned up dinner and now I'm moving on to more cooking for tomorrow. I'm trying to cook as much ahead of time as I possibly can. So the first thing I'm working on is homemade cranberry sauce. It's so intimidating, um, but so easy. And when you bring it to Thanksgiving, everybody's like, oh my goodness, like you made this from scratch and like they think it's amazing. So works out well. So if you want an easy side dish to bring, pick cranberry sauce. So usually I just do it with sugar, water, and cinnamon, but I'm doing it with a little bit of orange juice today. So we'll see how this comes out. I think it's gonna be really, really yummy. So keep in mind that for my recipe, I'm doubling it. So the recipe that I'm giving you, if you're just doing one bag of cranberries, you're gonna cut the recipe in half. So I'm starting out with one cup of water, adding one cup of orange juice. We're gonna do one and a half cups of sugar. So here's one cup and a half cup. So we're just gonna put this over medium heat and stir it, just to combine everything. And then we're gonna add a cinnamon stick and our cranberries. So our cinnamon stick. It's also really important to rinse your cranberries because you're also go through and see if any of them are smushed and some like have stems on them. And of course, just add some to your drain as well. Add that in, add in my second bag. Now we're just gonna kind of stir it all together, bring it to a simmer. And once it's simmering, we're gonna let it simmer for 10 minutes and all of these beautiful cranberries are going to burst and make my house smell fantastic. Now that this is doing its thing, I'm gonna let it do this for 10 minutes and then I'm going to put it into a dish and then I'll, once it's cooled down, put it in the fridge like all jelly-like overnight and how easy was that like beyond beyond easy you better make some cranberry sauce that's all i gotta say all right next up is sweet potato casserole with marshmallows and pecans this might be a little different to you i like to boil my sweet potatoes whole um there have been plenty of holidays where i have like a pot 
on every burner doing the sweet potatoes because they're much bigger than this, but this is just what I have. If it doesn't seem like enough, I might go out and buy more tomorrow, but we're also having mashed potatoes, so I don't know, this might be good enough. So I am going to boil them until I am able to stick a fork through them. Let's see, it's, what time is it right now? It's 8.01 right now, so I'll see how long they take to cook. But this way, it's just easier than peeling them all. You just like put them under cold water and the skin slips right off. Now for the yummy part, hopefully, is apple dump cake. And I found this on Pinterest, and Pinterest made me do it. It seems insanely easy, so I couldn't pass it up. And it seems like something that would be easy to make gluten-free. So you need two cans of apple pie filling. So you're just gonna put that all in the bottom here. And spread that out. You're going to need a half cup of caramel topping. So this is just like what you would put on ice cream. Oh my goodness. How can you go wrong with this? By the way, I did spray this pan. Maybe I use too much, but it'll be good. Just sprinkled a little bit of cinnamon on top. That's optional. And now I'm going to use, I'm using two boxes of gluten-free cake mix, but regular cake mix, one box will do. It's just that there's not as much in a gluten-free um, box. So I'm using two bags of gluten-free vanilla or yellow cake mix. I'm gonna pour it on top. smoothing it out and now I'm adding two sticks of melted butter this is very healthy only a hundred calories for this entire thing so eat up enjoy <laughs> I'm being sarcastic if you didn't know so this is what it currently looks like I'm gonna bake it on 350 degrees a lot of cake. I'm supposed to bake that for 45 minutes or until it's nice and crispy on top, but let's check our sweet potatoes here. Maybe like one more minute. It is 9.02 and these bad boys are officially done, so I'm going to put them in an ice bath. Okay, so I put these in some water with some ice to cool them off so I don't burn my hands, but look how easy. Kind of like pinch it and the skin just peels right off like that instead of going through all that other stuff. They don't really have to, you know, it doesn't really take much to cut them either. Um, so this is my favorite way to make my sweet potato casserole. Now I'm doing a half a cup of milk. A half stick of butter. Now I'm just adding one fourth cup of brown sugar. I'm gonna stir all this around. You can see as I stir it, the potatoes slightly like mashed. There's still gonna be some harder pieces in here, but that's why I don't really care too much about having them like perfectly uniform shapes because it doesn't matter at all. So now I'm just gonna cover this up and put it in the fridge for tomorrow. This is basically just to do a little prep ahead and have an easier day tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to top it with some honey, some marshmallows and pecans, and bake it. So you'll see that portion tomorrow. Alright, so this cooked for about an hour. Don't judge it by its cover. It's supposed to look like this, but it's going to taste amazing because I already tried a tiny little piece off the side. And the taste is delicious, so I can only imagine what it tastes like with the apples and the caramel. It's going to be amazing. But it's 11 p.m. so I'm gonna go upstairs and get ready for bed and I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right guys, welcome back to day two of Get It All Done. Clearly I'm not ready yet. It's about 1.43, I'm preheating the oven for my turkey. Crystal's here with Scarlett. Um, and I just washed the potatoes. I'm gonna peel them and cut them so we can get ready for our mashed potatoes. We're also doing a tablescape using all Dollar Tree products. So we're gonna get on that. And I guess first things first, let's start peeling and cutting the potatoes um, until the oven is preheated for the turkey. And then once that's all going, we will set the table and then make the rest of the side.
helping finish up the peeling of the potatoes because my hands are like completely raw. And I am going to put the turkey in. So I just got this disposable turkey thing. Not the greenest, but I gave my sister my turkey pan and now I don't have one. <laughs> so anyway, I have this. And these oven bags are supposed to be really good and they make the turkey cook faster and make it like just more yummy. And you need to add a tablespoon of flour. So I'm using gluten-free flour. So I'm putting that in first. Okay. Remember yesterday we brined our turkey in this bag? As soon as you open this, it just smells amazing already. Right, so Chris put this in the bag because no. And I just sliced up a bunch of onions and put it on the bottom because it's usually how I used to cook my whole chicken, so it'll probably, hopefully, taste really good. That's my new cookbook I'm coming out with. It's called Pray It Tastes Good. Oh, this, everyone's got their mom -om. <laughs> Smells good already, we still got 50 minutes left. Now I'm just boiling the potatoes. Now it's time for my Dollar Tree tablescape. Let's hope that this comes out good. Okay, I'm really, really happy with how the table came out. Everything is from Dollar Tree, except for this is from TJ Maxx. My potatoes are done, adding a stick of butter. Gonna stir that and then add some milk and some salt and pepper. Onto our green bean casserole. I am doing a larger can of French style green beans and then a, small, um, a smaller can of whole green beans and kind of just mixing that together. Gives it like a better texture. Now I'm adding a 10 and a half ounce can of gluten-free cream of mushroom soup. Now that that is all mixed together, I'm gonna bake it for 35 minutes. And then at the end, I'm gonna add these gluten-free french fried onions and some cheddar cheese. Also adding in my sweet potatoes to cook along with that. And then at the end, I'll add the honey and the marshmallows and the pecans. Turkey only has three minutes left, supposedly. Now it's time for our Brussels sprouts. Usually I um, roast them in the oven, but tonight I'm doing them in here. A little bit of olive oil. I should cut these ahead of time to make life easier. Except for when you throw plastic in. Mom is stirring the Brussels sprouts and the bacon. Uh, it's been a half an hour, so I'm going to add some cheddar cheese to this, and I'm going to add some honey, marshmallows, and pecans to this. Now I'm just adding a little bit of chicken broth and I'm gonna put something over this to cover it. Marshmallows are browning, cheese is melting. Mom, what's going on with this turkey? It's still going up. 
Clearly, we opened the bag too soon because when we checked it, it was still raw in here. So. is officially done, supposedly. I'm melting a half stick of butter and one and one fourth cup of water. That's boiling, putting my gluten-free stuffing. That was amazing. It is 7.47, we had to do bedtime and all that kind of thing. Chris cleaned up a bunch. Um, can't tell though because it was such a mess. I'm gonna show you what the kitchen looks like right now and I have to go clean. I'm not going crazy in depth because tomorrow is demo day for our house. So, you know, there's no need to be like going ham on the floors when they're getting ripped up tomorrow. But I'm gonna show you what we got going here.
is 9.09. The kitchen is clean. Don't think that Chris wasn't doing anything. He's a huge help. Let me show you what he's doing. He's, he's getting everything cleared out for the renovations to start. So I'm going to show you really quickly. So he completely cleared out the desk, which we were being hoarders. Apparently it was really bad in there. There's nothing in there because this whole thing is coming down. Um, you see the floor here? We're getting all new flooring. He took the TV out, the TV stand. We had like a little table over here he took out. He packaged up the kids' um, chairs, the rug, um, put everything in plastic bags, all the throw pillows, things like that. We're gonna still have to cover the couch with plastic. This is the last time you're gonna see the fireplace looking like this. This is one of the reasons why I could not wait to get it done. The bricks kept falling out and onto the ground, which is really scary. This whole thing is coming out. And my hopes are that with a new fireplace insert and a new fireplace and a new glass slider door that this room will be much warmer so that we don't have to use this base heater. And a little sneak peek of the stone that's gonna go around the fireplace. Not like all over the wall like this, just around the insert. All right, now I'm in my office. The ring light in my eyes, it's so dark in my office, I need my ring light. Um, I'm trying for the like fifth time today to make sure it's for Disney. So the first two times I tried, I don't know what I did wrong with like the pressure and stuff for the iron-on vinyl, but I'm gonna give it one more shot. That's not, that's not true. I'm gonna keep trying until I get it because that's just me. So let's go try that and pray that it works. So I went on to the Cricut app on my iPad and I bought the Mickey Mouse shape as well as the Disney font for $8.99 was my total for both things. So I'm like so determined. Plus I went to Michael's today to get plain white shirts to be able to iron these onto. So let's see how this works. So first of all, let me just make it. Do a mirror for iron on. Continue. Not that it even matters because a Mickey is a Mickey, but that would matter if you were using actual font. Set material. And then I'm going to use everyday iron on. I'm actually, I want to try something really quickly. I'm going to go to my settings, manage custom materials, make it. Okay. Fail number one of this project. Actually fail like 500, but fail 500 times and get back up 501 times. Or, I guess that stands for fall, not for fail. All right, so I have my shiny side down, which everybody on Instagram told me to do. Load it like that, not like staying down at all. My mat is not that sticky, apparently. Here. Please work, please work. Please make these shirts good for my babies. Oh, get down! Let's see if this is even remotely cut. Okay, this is gonna be like some hardcore weeding, but anything for my babies. I'm just beat from today, so we'll catch back up tomorrow. So make this a three day, get it all done with me. All right, third day, this is what happened. I got this red Mickey, these, the black ones, and then I ran out of um, iron on vinyl, so my mom had to get blue. And then I also bought these bows, I had to pay for these to be able to print them out. So let's see how this goes. All right, so I'm struggling here. This went on decent. I feel like the color of the red changed from the iron, but whatever. 
Um, but this is really hard to do. Looks really cute, but that was extremely challenging. Um, I'm sure because like it's like, you know, has the cut out center. Um, but I'm like, okay, that's the shortest name and that took me that long. So let's pray for me for the other ones. Debating, like I really wanted to put this bow on. I don't know, now that seems like too high up there. All right, this is how this turned out. I tried to make it like to like the right side, kind of like where like a pocket would be. So that's a little big for her, but whatever. It's my first time in A for effort, right? My kids are being crazy right now in the background, so please excuse that. This is the one I'm doing for the boys. Again, it was more red. Probably like burnt it with the iron, but it's okay. Now that that's on, I'm gonna try to put this on top like this. I actually really like how that came out. I think I'm just like my own worst critic. I don't know. Let's do tanners now. Okay, kids shirts are done. Now on to the grown up shirts. For those of you that have like the Cricut iron, I forget what it's called, the something like the heat press or whatever, do you really feel like it's that much better than actual iron? Because I'm debating it. If it really is that much better, yes, I'm using another like one layer of another shirt as my protectant, which probably isn't recommended either, but first time Cricut user here. This is the first time I ever made a shirt, so bear with me. Okay, next up I'm doing the bow. Okay, and that's how my shirt came out. So I did mine, Chris's, and the kids' shirts, and then I like messed up so much vinyl that I ran out of color when I realized like I didn't get my mom a shirt. Like I should make my mom a shirt, you know, she's coming with us. And so I asked her to bring a plain shirt because I literally just like thought of it today, which I'm sorry, mom, I feel bad. I literally am so scatterbrained. But anyway, I'm using blue vinyl and she brought me like this gray off the shoulder shirt. So I hope it works and I hope it looks cute for her. But I'm trying, doing the best that I can. All right, and this is how my mom's came out. I hope she likes it. Okay, I'm glad that's done. It would have been way, it probably would have been cheaper, less stressful to go out and buy these. I just feel like extra sentimental for some reason. I always have like one thing, like you know for Halloween, like I wanted to make their custom um, treat bags and stuff. Like I always have like one thing that's my thing and for this trip, like I really want it to make their shirt for their first time going to Disney just because, I don't know why. I just like felt like I had to do it and like it brings, I think it'll bring me joy when I see them wearing a shirt that I made in Disney. I don't know, I'm just a weirdo. So thank you all again so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and make sure to check out Bree's video and tell her that I sent you. I hope you all have an amazing holiday. So